My name is Martin Dale and I work at the Viking Ship Museum as a boat builder. Hello, my name is Trina Sørensen and I'm a curator working at the Viking Ship Museum in Roskilde, Denmark. For the past few years, Martin and I have had the shared responsibility of working with the documentation of the various different reconstruction projects that have taken place at the boatyard. And the paper that we're going to present to you today is based partly on our own personal experience, but also on the experience that the museum has gained through the last three decades of working with maritime experimental archaeology. The museum's work with experimental archaeology has largely been based on the reconstruction of the five Skullyulu ships. And just to give you a brief introduction to that find, you can see an aerial photograph from the excavation here, which took place in 1962. And what they found during the excavation were five different late Viking Age ships. Luckily for us, the ships were in such a good state of preservation that it was possible to start planning to build full-scale reconstructions. The first ship chosen for reconstruction was the ship find known as Skullyulu 3. This was the best preserved of the five Skullyulu ships, with about 75% of the hull surviving. The project itself ran for two years from 1982 to 1984 and really laid the foundation for the museum's work with maritime experimental archaeology. There were strict principles both for the reconstruction process, the building and then also for the documentation of the project itself. It was extensively documented both in diaries concerned with the build but also the thought processes and all of the decisions that were made along the way. The test sailing itself, after the ship was launched, was also very well documented and the whole project was concluded with an extensive publication which covered the entire process from the initial reconstruction in a, a scale model to the finished ship which had been sailed and tested. During the next two decades, the remaining four Skullyulu ships were also reconstructed in full scale. Each of these projects had its own specific focus. Some were very focused on the building processes, others were seen more as an education and outreach project, but each project had its own specific plan and documentation plan. One thing that was true for each of these projects was that publication at the end of the project has always been a state of objective. However, that has not always been the case. We all know that experimental archaeology is a very multidisciplinary process, and in the absolute best case scenario, you should always have archaeologists and craft specialists working together both in terms of the reconstruction and also the documentation. We're very privileged at the museum in that we have professional craftspeople employed full time. And so this kind of multidisciplinary environment is one that we're able to work within. Both disciplines have their own perspective, their own field of expertise, their own knowledge that they can bring to the process. And it's therefore really, really important that both the boat builder and the archaeologist are involved in the documentation process. Our paper is entitled Lessons Learned While Documenting Maritime Experimental Archaeology and some of those lessons are some that we have experienced ourselves during the last five years of working together but others are also just the museum's collective experience, things that we've learned as an institution while working with maritime experimental archaeology for the last three decades. And perhaps the most important lesson of all is the fact that the documentation process should also be cross-disciplinary just as the reconstruction process itself is. Here you can see a photograph of most of the team involved in the current reconstruction project we have at the boatyard. And this picture here, it represents a range of different disciplines from archaeology to boat building to reconstruction to documentation. And the reason why it's so important that the documentation process should also be cross-disciplinary is that each discipline has its own different field of expertise, its own perspective on things that we bring to the table. Things that I consider important as an archaeologist might be details that Martin would overlook as a boat builder, and vice versa, I might overlook specific details of the boat building process that are integral to understanding the project as a whole. By working together and by checking off with each other, have we recorded the things that are important and the things that are relevant, we get the most complete form of documentation. Another important lesson we've learned is the fact that ambitions don't always match with reality when you're working in an open air museum environment, something that I guess a lot of the rest of you are familiar with too. Here you can see two different pictures from two building projects. The first is from the construction of Helia Ask in 1991, and you can see how the boat builders are working at a large distance away from the public. There's a, a fence erected with some exhibition materials so that they can look at the building process, but they're not engaging with the boat builders directly. So essentially they get to build in peace. The picture you can see at the bottom is from 2015 when we built the Gislinger boat. Um, here is a completely different scenario as you can see. The guests are invited right up to the building site. They're literally standing in dialogue with the boat builders as they're working. And while this is a great experience for our guests, it gives them a chance to really experience the craft process and experimental archaeology up close. It creates a challenging work environment, um, both for the building, but also for the documentation. Another point is that the documentation of the use of reconstructions is just as, if not more important than the documentation of their construction, is through the use of these reconstructions, be they ships, houses, whatever they are, that we gain the best insight into how 
they worked in the past. And so it's incredibly important that we continue to document after the initial construction phase is completed. Documentation of use is just as important as documentation of reconstructing. Uh, we have had, as you can see on the picture, we have uh, two boat builders on a raft repairing the sea stallion after a sail around the north part of Sealand. And the problem here is that the rigging is simply pulling the boat apart uh, underneath the waterline. And uh, when we have repaired uh, a, a damage like this, we go back to the original found material to see what have they done. And we actually figured out that on part of the strengthening uh, bits around the mast area they have extra nails in that we haven't so it's always really important when you get f damages like this to go back to the find material and see how the, did it actually look there's some challenges with uh, different types of ways of documenting um, for example you see a drawing here of a wooden tree nail and when you have a drawing, you have a size and you have a shape, but uh, there's a lot before that. I mean, first you have to go out in the forest to find the right piece of material. You have to chop it down at the right time of year. You have to cleave it out and store it for a while and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of in-betweens uh, that you don't really get if you don't know, and you can't get that out of drawing or text at least you have to have a really uh, defined and long text. So one of our most important ways of handing over knowledge is when we have an apprentice and we teach and we tell. So all the things in between is quite important to get into the documentation process as well. Documenting in words and images is not always enough. In, in this slide you see Hanus teaching Asker uh, Hanus is educated uh, from the Faroe Islands and Asker is a Danish boat builder. Um, Hanus has uh, been building boats since he was 17. And uh, in this case, they are building two Tianger, which is a big uh, Faroe Islands 20 person rowboat. It's uh, all the tricks of the trade that uh, Asker is picking up in this case. In many ways, experimental archaeology and intangible cultural heritage are inextricably linked. We cannot carry out experimental archaeology unless we have skilled traditional craftspeople who can do the building side of the work for us. And in that way, it's really important when we work with experimental archaeology that we also preserve the language of the craft. And so to conclude, what are the most important lessons that we have learned through our work with documenting maritime experimental archaeology at the museum? First and foremost, we've said it before and we'll probably continue to say it again and again, it is absolutely important to always, always encourage and support collaboration between craft experts and archaeologists. It's the absolutely best way for experimental archaeology to advance as a discipline and the best way to ensure that we build accurate reconstructions that we can extract useful data from. The second thing is that it's important to make documentation plans that extend beyond the initial construction phase. This has probably been our biggest failing at the museum, that documentation of the build has generally been carried out to a sufficient level, but documentation of the use, the repair and the maintenance of the reconstructions that came afterwards hasn't always lived up to the standards that we had hoped for. It's quite important uh, when you're working together as a team with academics and handworkers that you talk about what is important to document. For example, if you are out in the forest chopping down a tree with an axe, is the focus where the axe is found or is the focus how you chop down the tree so it falls in the right direction and in the right way? So the importance of what you get out of the documentations, you have to have an idea of too. Another important point is to be realistic in setting goals for both the documentation and the publication. While the majority of our reconstruction projects at the museum are well documented and we have an incredibly extensive archive of text material, photo material, very few of our ships have actually been published in detail as a kind of concluded experimental archaeological project. And this is something that we're hoping to work on in the future. It's also very important to be aware of and to make strategies for the documentation and preservation of the intangible aspects of the project. 
as a discipline, we're incredibly reliant upon traditional craft skills. And so we also have a duty to ensure that these skills can survive into the future. Finally, it's also important to learn from your mistakes. We, none of us are perfect. We're all doing the best that we can, but it's only through recognizing and also telling others about the mistakes that we have made that the discipline can advance. Thank you to Roland and to all the team at Exac, and we hope to see you all again soon.